In Space Watch, NASA took a giant leap forward after successfully testing a launch abort system. A dummy capsule lifted off this morning in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The capsule successfully triggered its abort system six miles into the atmosphere. The test means if there is an emergency during launch, astronauts on board a spacecraft can safely be ejected. NASA calls this a milestone as it prepares to put astronauts back on the moon in the next five years and eventually to Mars. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins us now from Merritt Island, Florida. So Bill, walk us through exactly what happened this morning during this test mission. Well, it's really interesting. You know, a few years back, they tested this abort system on the launch pad. In other words, let's assume a rocket has a catastrophic failure while they're still on the pad. Will the launch escape system work? And it did just fine. For this test, they made it even tougher. They said, what happens if the launcher fails at the worst possible moment? And that usually occurs in a region they call max Q. That's when the rocket is going through maximum aerodynamic stress as it's powering its way out of the dense lower atmosphere. So that's why they waited until the rocket was up about six miles today. They were simulating Max Q on the big rocket that will launch Orion capsules to the moon. So the launch, the launch abort system triggered, as you said, normally, uh, pulled that dummy capsule away with about seven G, seven times the force of normal gravity, uh, reoriented it for reentry and then separated, which is exactly what they wanted it to do. And by all accounts, it did just that. They're very pleased with the results of this test. Yeah, and NASA called this a success uh, a milestone. We know the Trump administration wants to actually send astronauts back to the moon in five years. How important was this test and sort of moving that lunar mission forward? Well, it's absolutely critical. You know, all of these tests are. This five-year goal that the administration has laid on NASA means all of these milestones have to go off to have any chance of getting there. You're not going to put astronauts on a brand new rocket like the Space Launch System without some way to make sure they can get away in the event of a catastrophic failure. So that's an absolute requirement. This test finishes that phase of, uh, of that testing. The launch abort system, barring some unforeseen, you know, something wrong in the data, which I don't expect, uh, this is going to be ready to go. So another critical milestone, but really they're all critical. Mm. Uh, if they're going to get to the moon within five years. What else, Bill, does NASA need to test out and accomplish before they can actually send astronauts back to the moon? Well, of course, the big step is the Space Launch System rocket. You know, we look back on Apollo 50 years ago. They launched on top of that huge Saturn V rocket, still the most powerful rocket in the world. The Space Launch System is even more powerful than a Saturn V. Uh, and so they need to launch that with nobody on board first. The second launch of that rocket in the 2022 time frame We'll have astronauts on board. They'll loop out around the moon and come back. And then the very third flight of that rocket will carry the astronauts who are going to descend to the surface and land on the moon. Uh, so getting that rocket certified for flight is, is critical. Uh, it's been behind schedule by months, if not years, and way over budget as it currently stands. Uh, but they believe they'll be ready for the initial test flight late next year or very early in 2021. Mm, people so interested to see how, how they're able to make this progress to get there. Absolutely. Yeah, Bill, you know, I want to ask you about another NASA accomplishment today. A NASA facility in West Virginia was renamed the Katherine Johnson Independent Verification and Validation Facility. We know this morning Johnson, who's now 100 years old, wasn't actually at the ceremony. Her two daughters were there. Remind us again how she contributed to the original moon mission. You know, it is quite a milestone, really, as an African-American who went to work for the agency that preceded NASA back in 1953, and she was a mathematics whiz, and she managed to work her way into, a, at that point, nearly all-male, nearly all-white world uh, that calculated orbital dynamics. She was an expert at calculating the trajectories of the initial Mercury flights, and as she put it later, also emergency returns if there was a problem. If you remember the Apollo 13 mission, mm -hmm. uh, which had an explosion on the way to the moon, some of the techniques that Katherine Johnson helped pioneer uh, were employed to get that crew back safely. She once joked that, you know, all these people are trying to get the astronauts to a destination. We're trying to make sure they can get back. Mm -hmm. And she helped affect some of those very techniques. Very amazing, uh, amazing career at NASA. I'm just glad we're highlighting her stories and the stories of so many people that you don't get to hear beyond the astronauts who make those missions. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Bill. Look forward to more. Thanks again. Bill Harwood. Sure thing.